Now I'm going to talk about the cost-benefit decision, which is one of the most important decisions in all of economics. It drives every single decision people make. Any decision you look at, whether it's macroeconomic, microeconomic, deep down into somebody or some group of people's cost-benefit decision. Now we've talked before that costs and benefits are both at the margin, meaning people look at the decision to do one more of some activity. And at some point, it's really important that people decide to stop. And so in economics, you think if you like something, why would you ever want to not do any more of it? It's because you're looking at the costs and benefits of that decision. So the big thing to think about is that costs are rising and benefits are falling because of scarcity. So anytime, whether it's a business or a person, you're deciding what to do, to ride your bike longer, to watch more of a movie, everything like that, you're weighing the costs and benefits of continuing, and sometimes it's better to stop because it's better or a better alternative to do something else. And so it's all because of the scarcity. All right, so the way this can be ex expressed is through a graph. The graph looks like supply and demand. It looks like other graphs you see in economics, and that's really important because if you learn how to use a graph properly, then you can use any other kind of graph that you see in economics. So the decision we're really making is a quantity decision. How much Q or quantity to do of something? And we're going to find the optimal quantity, which means the right amount in which it is worse to do less of it and worse to do more of it. So we're going to be along the horizontal axis here, trying to figure out which is the best quantity to do. Now, the vertical axis is going to be some measure, and if you've seen supply and demand before, you would know it's price. But here it's going to be just something you're giving up. It doesn't have to be dollars. It's a cost and a benefit, something given up or something gotten. So I'm going to put C comma B. And what we're going to have is two lines, one showing marginal cost and one showing marginal benefit. Now, when I talk about the production function, when I talk about the PPF, and how labor, capital, and land go into production. I'm going to actually show an example of how the, the numbers give us falling benefits and rising costs. And in fact, you can show that the benefits and costs are inverses of each other. But right now, I'm going to say that it's a simple negative relationship or downward sloping relationship for benefits and an upward sloping or positive relationship for costs. So why is that? Well, first of all, if you think of any activity, and the one I always think of is watching Netflix, if you can stream a whole show online, why wouldn't you watch as many episodes as you could? When do you go to bed? When do you stop watching? And it has to do with scarcity. You only have so many hours, and every hour spent watching TV, it means you're not sleeping, it means you could be tired the next day, it means that you're not having dinner, you could be hungry. Even though the marginal cost is zero, you do not pay extra money to subscribe to the next episode of a show. It's already paid. It's free monetarily. Even though the marginal cost monetarily is zero, you are giving up other alternatives to watch one more episode. So it's costly. The marginal cost is rising. You watch one episode, two episodes, three episodes. By episode four, it's midnight. You have to get up for school the next day. It's going to cost you to watch more episodes in terms of something else you could be doing. And so the more you watch, the more you're giving up about other opportunities. Now, benefits are falling too. You can watch seven, eight, nine episodes of a show. At some point, your brain just can't absorb it. Your brain space is scarce. And so you might not enjoy episode 10 as much as you enjoyed episode 9. And so diminishing marginal returns catch in or set in. And so we sometimes talk about diminishing returns. The technical phrase is diminishing marginal returns. So we have increasing marginal costs, decreasing marginal benefits. Now, this is important in economics. This crossing point is the equilibrium point. Equilibrium means balance. Here, costs and benefits are balanced. And right here is the quantity, oftentimes given Q star for equilibrium quantity. This is the right amount of the activity to do. It could be production decision, a firm wants to build more buildings or hire more workers or make more of the thing it makes. Could be your activity, how many hours of sleep to get or how much TV to watch, whatever it is. This is the amount you do and it's costly to do more and it's costly to do less. Now, exceeding this quantity means you're doing too much. If you're over here, 
marginal cost is greater than marginal benefit. This means that if you do too much of something, the rise in costs outweigh the falling benefits. Basically, you're, you're tired the next day for a show you can't even remember. It costs more than it's worth. That means you should have done less. And so the economic way of thinking says, don't do too much of something if it costs more than it's worth. So do less. And this is the point where you'd settle at. So a lot of people can get that. They say, well, if something's not worth it, don't do it. But what's wrong with this point? Right here, if you're underdoing something good, that means you're not doing enough of something that is beneficial to you. Here you have high benefits and low costs. You're not doing as well as you could. You could be doing better if you do more of things that are worth it. So here you're some, doing something that's low cost and high benefits. You're hurting yourself by not doing more of it. So this is too little, this is too much, and the economy or the economic decision is going to settle at the point where you're doing the just right amount right here at equilibrium. You're not underdoing it and you're not overdoing it. So all decisions are made this way. People decide when to stop doing something based on a cost-benefit decision, and other times they decide to do more based on a cost-benefit decision. Now, what happens if a situation changes? This is something that we're going to see is that what if this is just your situation at one point in time? What if costs or benefits change on a given day? So for example, if you have a big test the next day, you might find that not getting enough sleep could raise your costs. So watching television means that it's really hurting your test score the next day if you're watching television instead of studying. The way that we draw changes that change the whole situation is by shifting the costs and benefits curves. So the general way of thinking it is that if costs rise, they move up. And if costs fall, they move down. And remember, zero is here. So down means towards zero. Up is away from zero or a higher number. And the same thing is true for benefits. And so you can have shifts in a curve. Now we'll see this a lot with supply and demand, but here's a real quick look at this. If something happens that says, this TV show is really expensive to me, it's free, I'm not getting charged for it because the bill's already paid for Netflix, but I need to get enough sleep tomorrow to study for my test. This show is more expensive today than any other day. It's going to be more costly. So we shift the cost curve higher. We move every single point this way. And I usually label with a little hash mark here, MC dash, and I usually give it a hashed line so you can tell it's new. But look, the costs are higher. They're shifted up. And look at the new equilibrium point. The equilibrium point settles down at this quantity here. In other words, this changed situation gives us a lower equilibrium quantity. In short, if you have a big test the next day, watch less TV. The optimal quantity based on your cost-benefit decision, which is different this time, says you're best off doing less of this activity because of costs and benefits. It's not stable. Different situations change costs and change benefits. If you had a test on the movie, your benefits might change. It might be worth more to watch. It. But all else equal, or ceteris paribus, this cost-benefit decision is based on each individual's choices at a, at a given point in time. And when you violate ceteris paribus, when you change the game, so to speak, you're going to see these costs move. So to summarize, cost-benefit decisions come up in every production, every microeconomic decision, every macroeconomic decision. When people or businesses or governments follow this, then they can make the optimal decision and do just the right amount of whatever it is they're trying to do.